Good evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the Constitution, the law, and the events of today to you each month. Good evening and welcome to Law Talk. Tonight we're fortunate enough to have uh, something you might have read about in the news. We actually have a visitor on the set tonight, and that would be somebody that, where did you come from, and what is your name? Uh, glad to be here. You're glad to be here, but do you know where you come from? Uh, I'm from Iran. I mean, Syria. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I always mix those up. Sorry. Do you mix up kidding. Iran and Syria? He's always kidding around like that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I understand that you came through one of the resettlement camps that was located in Los Gatos. Is that correct? Uh, happy to be in Los Gatos. I like Los Gatos, yeah. You're happy to be in Los yeah, Gatos? Happy. happy to be in Los Gatos. Well, is the government providing you a background check to make sure that uh, th you, you are from Syria? Um, I brought some paperwork here. I've got, uh, I've got an email from Hillary Clinton. You have an email? Yeah, yeah I see that email. It, it must be important because it says top secret on it. It says top secret. <laughs> I, I understood this came out of Colorado. Is this the one that came from the bathroom in Colorado? Uh, those are all, all over the web. Anyone can see those. Too. Oh, did you buy this in Los Gatos for $50? <laughs> yeah, you can get those. Yeah, yeah these are, they're all in the street corners, correct? <laughs> all of correct? stuff is everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Well, the so, Nigerians got it. You well, know. I have a question. Do you have a passport? Uh, no, but I, I managed to get a birth certificate. A birth certificate? <laughs> yeah. Was this created by Adobe? Acrobat? I paid good money for that birth certificate. Why <laughs> do the letters look like they're in different fonts? <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes the sunlight in the boat on the way over. Oh, yeah. the sunlight in the boat on the way over. <laughs> yeah, 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 the boat. So you the, came from the, in a boat. The a raft. Boat from the, which, which, the raft. Which raft. country did you come from? Iran. I mean, Syria. Syria. Uh, sorry. Iran. Syria. I want to make it clear. I'm not a colonel in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. I'm a Syrian refugee. That's How right. old are you? Uh, I, it's on the, isn't it on the birth certificate? I can't read the birth certificate. Oh, it's in right. Arabic. Oh, well, that's... Uh, I'm pretty old. Yeah, I'm pretty old. Not that old, though. Okay. So, okay. So you have a birth certificate. You have an email and a birth certificate. So how did you find yourself in Los Gatos? Happy to be here. They flew me first class. They flew you <laughs> first class. class. Yeah, yeah. Part of the Obama plan for Mideast refugees. Very oh, happy. Oh, well, the Mideast <laughs> refugees. Very happy. How many people did you come with? Uh... I think we have another 200,000 coming this week. So. Oh, to Los Gatos. Yeah, to Los Gatos. Yeah. Oh, well, I have a question. Do they have housing they're putting you in? Well, they said that uh, we, should, we should get a house. I think we need about $2 million each for a house, I think, yeah. Oh, I see. So, wait a minute. Let me get to They said you need to have a house. Yeah, they're going to give us a house. So, so of course, they moved you to the, the least <laughs> expensive location in the Bay Area is Los Gatos. Well, I did. they said they weren't discriminating, so, yeah, we should... They oh, they weren't discriminating. Yeah, so oh, we should I be able to get to Los Gatos. Yeah. So you're trying to tell me that they wanted to put Syrians into Los Gatos because they felt there wasn't enough Syrians in Los Gatos. Well, why shouldn't we get to live in Los Gatos? Los Gatos, you know. Come on. Wait, what about Los Altos Hills? Los Altos Hills, we don't have a... Uh, there's, not, there's not a hot spot there. Ah, there's not one of the settlement well, there's locations. There's 168 hot spots. One of them is Los Gatos. Ah, did you come with your family? Uh, oh, I have a big family on the way, on the way, on the way. Oh, big family on the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, like every 200,000 come, and then each of us have, you know, another 100 people. So there will be millions and millions and millions. Millions. Yeah. Millions. Millions and millions. millions. How, so where do you, what part of Syria are you from? I'm from Iran. Oh, yeah, I mean Syria. Well, part of Syria. Oh, I, yeah, I'm from Syria, yeah. Where in Syria were you from? Uh, over there in Syria, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Some place in Syria. Some place in Syria, yeah. How did, how did you leave Syria? Well, it was all part of the, my Weight Watchers plan. Your Weight Watchers yeah, plan? Weight what kind there. of plan is that? It's the Obama Weight Watchers plan. And tell me about that. Uh, you just have uh, Putin eat your lunch for you. And then that way you don't, you don't put on any weight. Yeah, don't put on any weight. Yeah, okay, just, just so, have Putin eat your lunch. Well, let's go back to this for a minute because I'm trying to... Why did you leave Syria? Well, because I wanted to come here because uh, this is the land of opportunity. I'm happy to be here. You're happy to be here. And when you say the land of opportunity, what does that mean to you? Well, it means that here, finally, we can do the caliphate. The caliphate? Yeah, we can finally have the caliphate here. Oh, you're yeah. talking about the caliphate. The caliphate, yes. Okay, happy. can Very you happy. describe to me what a caliphate mm. is? 
Everyone's very happy to be the caliphate here. Yeah. Everyone's yeah, happy to be in the caliphate, yeah, yeah, but yeah. what is the caliphate? Is that another part of Los Gatos? Is that one of the suburbs that <laughs> I don't know about? It's going to be a suburb, yeah. The it's going to be, be a, a suburb. suburb yeah. Is this somewhere near Lexington Reservoir? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think we can go sailing on Lexington Reservoir. And you can go yeah. on, you can sailing. Is yeah. that, do you have your pa papyrus boats that you yeah, sail across? Yeah, we across? had our rafts, yeah. We have yeah, you have your rafts. Tubes. Yeah, your that's rafts. how we got here, yeah. Oh, so I have a question. When you came over... Were most of the people that you came over with between the ages of 20 and 35? Yeah, mostly men over 20 and 35. Most of them had been in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. I mean, oh, refugees. Oh, I see. I oh, mean, yes. re refugees okay. from Syria. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. so this this would just, be... Just call, just call me Ali. My, my name's Ali Shaker. I you... did ask you that name. What is your name? Ali Shaker, but my friends call me the Clockmaker. The Clockmaker? Yeah, yeah, Clockmaker. Why do they call you the Clockmaker? Oh, I make clocks. Beautiful clocks. Well, beautiful. what kind of clock do you make? Oh, I got one right here. I'll show you. What Can you show no, us? Oh, we make some beautiful clocks, yeah. Are these clocks you're going to sell in Los Gatos? Oh, uh, yeah, we, we'll use them on Los Gatos. Yeah, there's some, yeah, we make beautiful clocks. Well, these are <laughs> interesting timepieces. Yeah, they keep good time. Big batteries there. Big and batteries. do you use a cell phone with this clock? No, no, it's, it just has a, you just set the You just set, set the, the clock. You set the time. You yeah. set the clock. So you're yeah. Ali the clock maker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ali the clock maker. And these maker. are the clocks that you're bringing with you from Syria. Well, we know how to make them. We can make them out of anything. Oh, you can make them out of anything. Any, anywhere, yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. trying to tell me this is like a, a jogging <laughs> jogging thermos? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, we're very happy to be here, so. And, and you're very happy to be here, <laughs> but you have everything you need to make a clock. Yeah, that's true. Oh, okay. So that's so a land of the, opportunity. It's so this is, is with a lot of Syrians <laughs> know how to make these clocks, do Oh, they? I teach them, yeah. Yeah, 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 have you ever heard of a group called the Coos Force? The, what's that? Coos Force? The Coos Force, ah, uh, it sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah is that a, where a lot of your group comes from, the Coos Force? Well, I'm just saying, you know, I, I'm saying I'm not a colonel in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. I'm definitely not. I'm definitely a regular refugee. A regular came. refugee. I'm not a colonel what, in the What kind of refugee, what, what, what gives you refugee status? The, uh, the, the Weight Watcher Program. The Weight Watcher Program. <laughs> the Weight Watcher Program. Well, yeah. I have a question. If you have the Weight Watcher Program and you have refugee status, are you going to be able to vote in the next election? Oh, yeah. we all we, Actually, we can get a license right away. You can get a driver license. And Governor Brown just signed Motor Voter. So as soon as so you get a license, voter, we, get to, so we can vote. As that as means as as all the people that come over yeah, under, sure. under, uh, that are brought in today, you're saying can get a driver's license? Well, everyone gets a driver's license. And then we get to vote. They can't say it's voter fraud because we didn't know when we got a driver's license. <laughs> he couldn't <Yeah>. vote. <laughs> Why would anyone know that? Yeah, how would you know that? So I have a question. So can you sell these clocks door to door? Uh, we we give those away. You give those away. <laughs> yeah, we give those away to special people. Are there special people that get them delivered to <laughs> yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, we deliver especially. To okay, so so okay, so we have we what you're saying there's going to be two hundred thousand people. Potentially men between the ages of 20 to 35 brought to Los Gatos to start a new caliphate, right. which is going to be a suburb of Los Gatos. Right. And then at that point, you're going to be clockmakers, mm -hmm. and you're going to be you'll be integrated mm -hmm. into the Bay Area. And funny enough, you'll be able to vote under the Motor Voter Bill that yeah, Governor Brown just passed. Yeah, we can vote under the Motor Voter. So. Now, who, what, 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 who do you believe you would vote for? Well, we're very happy to be here. So You're Obama, very happy to be we're, here. We're here on the, are you going to vote for the people that brought you here? We're, we're, we're here on the Obama plan, so we're voting oh, for Obama. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, things like this, I mean, these are very luxurious. Okay. The, the, how much do you charge for these? Oh, like I said, we give those away to free to special oh, people. Free. Yeah. Okay. We give away to free, yeah. So let's go back to this. So <laughs> what about all your cousins that went to Europe? Well, are see, they coming here too? There were some problems because uh, the Hungarians built a big fence. And then, the Hungarians built a fence. Yeah, and then the European Union started putting up border patrols. And uh, it, originally, everyone thought we were going to be able to go to Germany. But now the Germans aren't taking hardly anybody. Right. And all the countries on the way um, are putting up fences and putting up border patrol. So we're very happy that President Obama said we all can come to the United okay, States now. Okay, so I got a question. So Is we're all anybody here. in Los Gatos putting up fences? Well, no, it's open arms. I mean, we all we expect to get, you know, $2 million houses. Of course, we're, we're on food stamps. We get, all the, we get all the benefits, of course. 
And uh, so we're very happy to be here. We're well, glad to be here. Well, you know what, uh, Allie? I'm going to shake your hand because I'm going to say welcome home. Oh, yeah, yeah. The bear is now your home. <laughs> And I wanted to thank you for for bringing your watch your watch and clock making <laughs> techniques to our country, oh, it'll which be. I'm sure hundreds of thousands, <laughs> if not millions, will bring on board. Yeah, well, there's more on the way. Believe me. I believe you. I do believe you. So as we move on tonight, and we we move on from Ali, the the visitor from Syria, who's coming by the millions uh, uh, to get free. Affordable Care Act, <laughs> food stamps. We move on to our next subject. What is our next subject? Okay, so the next, uh, there's been a, a spate of uh, police shootings and indictments of police and police being charged with murders uh, with suspects in the last year. In fact, in, this, in, in 2015, just as part of 2015, there's been more indictments of police officers for shooting suspects than in the last decade. Um, so the 12 officers is twice the average. So basically, police are being taken to task uh, for shooting suspects recently in the last well, several I, months. Well, I, I am going to tell you there have been several instances where police have shot unarmed suspects. And I have a question, though. Is this related to any one incident that started this, or is this a general trend that you see in the police organizations and the various communities around the country? Well... I mean, I, I myself, you know, I, I, I've had a client that was badly beaten by the police because he didn't pull over right away because he, he, had, he had some drinks, right? And so the police had the lights on for a while, which the police don't like that, and he didn't have the blinker on, right? So, you know, usually if the police put the red lights on and you're not going to stop right there, you should put a blinker on so at least they know you saw the lights and you tend to pull over. This guy went... I like about three quarters of a mile when he pulled over at his domicile at his house, right? And uh, and he had some tacos, and they said drop the tacos. He didn't drop the tacos because he didn't want to drop his box of tacos. And then they drug him out and and they they kicked him pretty badly. They uh, they broke one of his ribs and that punctured his liver and he was in intensive care for. Well, five wait, days. Okay, let me ask because, this. So, did, I mean, I, did the police articulate that they felt the tacos were a weapon? Yeah, they thought the, ta the, 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 the tacos might have been a gun, but he wouldn't drop them. So, he was so kinda, because he wouldn't drop the tacos, he, right. he, was, he was, got put through a beating. And then they beat him, and then they said, well, he was trying to keep from getting cuffed because he was curled in a ball. My argument was, well, you're curled in a ball if you're getting kicked by a couple of cops. Um, so, well, he was in the fetal position. Right. So, you know, there are situations where police overreact, and that's always been the case. Um, on the other hand, you know, police have to make split-second decisions, and, you know, sometimes that's a split-second decision involving lethal force. And so one of the most famous ones was Ferguson, of course, where, they, you know, the one witness says that the suspect had his hands up. Right, and this is, this is the instance where... Um, where, in fact, uh, there had been an uh, all-points bulletin for somebody meeting the, the, general, the general appearance of the for person that the patrol robbery. car pulled over. And, yeah. yeah, we all know that one, and that, unfortunately, was a shooting of uh, a person that uh, did attack the police officer. Um, but that's not what's really creating the problem now. What I'm seeing is a lot of police officers that are overreacting, and the worst part is they're shooting people that are unarmed. And well, they're shooting them a... in instances where they should not have been shot. Well, there and was those a... are being, that's where the prosecutions are going up. Well, like I said, the, the Ferguson was one that was very famous. Um, I think the witness who said, you know, that the suspect has his hands up never testified. Now, what's the reason he didn't testify? We don't know, but that never went into the record, and that right. that police officer was exonerated. Um, then you have a, a about a year ago in November, um, you had a, a Tamar Rice, a 12-year-old, and uh, killed uh, by a police officer. Um, and I guess is that the is that the young child that had the pellet gun? Um, yeah, I think it was the pellet gun. But it looked like a 45 automatic. But, there was, but the orange yeah. part was painted over. And so it wasn't even, you couldn't identify it as a pellet gun. And Which I do, make, What kind of makes me wonder, what if you had a regular gun and you painted orange and then... And then, yeah, <laughs> I, I know so. that, uh, that was, and I, know, I do know the officer was uh, taken in the, for the shooting, 
But that one, once again, is, is more justifiable if there's a weapon present. The, the crimes that I'm talking about that police are really being prosecuted for, we have the, the person that was thrown into the police van and then given the ride, the, the one uh, that was in Jefferson, uh, Missouri, I believe, where, they get, where there were six police officers involved with that one where the, uh, the young man in the back uh, actually had, had his neck broken under some kind of conditions where they gave him a ride, and there's six police being yeah, prosecuted some, for that there one. There was some uh, testimony on that. I don't know if it was from another suspect that he'd been throwing himself against the wall of the van. I don't know what happened to that testimony. I, I don't know what yeah, the result that, was. That, I think he changed that testimony. Yeah. When, as soon as he found out, he might have said that in the beginning, but what happens oftentimes is people don't want to be the subject of uh, repercussions of giving testimony that may right. be correct or incorrect. But the idea of police shootings um, is something that's uh, it's actually changed a lot of police behavior in this country. And I understand now even Rahm Emanuel in Chicago is, is saying that crime is way up because the police are refusing to do their jobs. And he's blaming the police for being afraid of being prosecuted for the wrong type of actions on the uh, as they do their duties. So what well, do you know was, about that? Well, there was I think there were sixty murders last month in Chicago, and uh, you know when people talk about you know gun control and stuff, Chicago has one of the most strictest the strictest strictest gun strictest control in the anywhere, and it has the most shootings and it has the most murders <laughs> every weekend. Well, it was shooting murders, yeah. you know. So it's kind of interesting. The stricter your gun laws are. Well, like they say, when guns are outlawed, the outlaws have only, the guns. Only outlaws have guns. And so, uh, so, you know, Chicago has the strictest gun control. They have the most murders, with exception, I think, I don't know about per capita, but I think down or along the border, there's some towns that have very high murder well, rates. Well, if you go across so, border, Juarez, for yeah, a couple yeah. of years, had the most murders Yeah, so, I mean, I, I actually I lost a bet on that yeah, once because yeah. I thought it was Chicago. But Chicago is, is the murder, you know, has more murders per capita than anything. And they've got the strongest um, anti-gun laws. And uh, what it is is the police are kind of pulling back. And the, the police union says, Well, they're hey. afraid. They say, well, I don't want to get indicted. And, um, you know, and they're in a tricky situation anyway. So, yeah, they, yeah, I don't think it's that they're not doing their job. But they're maybe not as gung-ho as they used to be before they started getting indicted all the time. So then what's a, what are we going to talk about here? How can, how can is, do, you, do you predict? There, I, I'm not clear how this can reverse itself. Because if, if, if police are being prosecuted, for, we talked about, you know, uh, an, an instance, something happens. How is an officer supposed to be able to react properly when, when there looks to be violence in, right in front of them at that moment? They do only have a split second to make a decision. How are they supposed to well, come back from the fear of being prosecuted? Well, I just say, like in this uh, Tamar Rice case, uh, an FBI special agent, and a prosecutor from Denver both looked at, did probes into that, did a report, and they said, you know, he, that was reasonable. What he what he did there was reasonable. He, he thought it was a gun. He shot her. Um, the lawyer for the Rice family, of course, said that these experts are calculated to bias the case and bias the grand jury and that it's right. suspicious that they're even involved. Um, we also had um, uh, Officer Daniel Willis accused of murder of the Yvette Smith and in that case, the police were responding to some kind of altercation fight. Yeah. And they showed up, and the officer had an AR-15 and thought that Smith was armed. Okay, I think we're going to have and, to hold off on that because I know we have a long list of these, and we're actually doing our research right now trying to determine which are being prosecuted, which are not being prosecuted, and trying to do a little statistical analysis for, uh, for our Law Talk audience so they can see that. So why don't we, what's our final subject for tonight? Okay, so um, this, this is kind of an interesting constitutional issue. Um, the Republicans and the House of Representatives, they, they're the majority there. Um, there's a caucus there, the Freedom Caucus, and they're unhappy because they feel that the, the leadership under Boehner um, didn't let them have uh, um, <clears throat> say in amendments and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, um, you know that uh, Boehner has been under a lot of pressure now for <coughs> several years for having a Republican majority, but then actually not getting anything done. 
And the problem with that is that he is there, he's been accused of going along with the lobbyists and going along with the Democrats, going along with the president. But in reality, what he's having is dissension within the Republican Party on what should be actually getting done. And, and the Republican majority that was elected into the, <coughs> into the legislature was supposed to be to help, you know, control the Affordable Care Act, help to stop the illegal immigration, help to uh, put us back in the world stage so we aren't losing our position in the world as we have been for the last six years. We have Putin out of control in the Middle East, Ukraine, Crimea. We have the Chinese building islands off Japan. We have the Chinese want, threatening to invade Taiwan. But what is Boehner doing? Well, Boehner's I, not doing anything. Well, I think what the, some of the main constitution is, the, the, the House has the power of the purse. And all, anything that's spent is supposed to be initiated from the House, which is kind of interesting because like the Affordable Care Act was initiated in the Senate. Yeah, so but see, they could have cut, so, cut off the funding yeah. for that, but they never have. And so they have. The, that's really the only power they have is the power of the purse. Which, and by the way, that was constantly constitutionally established well, yeah, so that the they would beginning. have the power of the purse. And they haven't used that. And in the cases, I think, where the freedom class is very upset they didn't use that, were in situations like, uh, like Obama made a treaty without making a treaty with Iran. And so, you know, they're saying, well, why should taxpayers pay for something that's unconstitutional? It's a criminal action, right? There's no... There's no way that a president can make a treaty without going through well, the Senate. Uh, all treaties are supposed to be passed by a the majority Senate. of both the House and the yeah, Senate. Senate. And, and so, this, and is, so this, is, this, is, this is the law. This so, is the so, Constitution. I mean, so the Freedom Caucus goes, well, why are taxpayers paying for an illegal action? So I think, I think particularly in the case where Obama's done, you can consider it imperial, you can consider it gangster, whatever you consider it. But whatever, it's, it's strictly unconstitutional and illegal. Why should taxpayers have to fund that? And there's no reason the Congress can't say, we won't give you a penny well, for that. Well, then, then, then that brings up the question, why, if the people of this country elected, uh, were hoping, trying to control spending, control the deficit, which is now up to almost $20 trillion, how is it that there has been no action on, by the Republican Party. Is well, it this simple 40-vote 40, 40 group that has been holding them back? Or no, is there no, other I'm, things that are going well, on? Well, I think so far, I mean, depending how you look at it, but the Republican um, uh, leadership was rolling over. They said they didn't want any trouble. They didn't want to be accused of causing a shutdown or... Oh, well, the uh, government they, shut down. Yeah, because, like, say, let's say that... Well, I, I think it really comes down, and, and I think we've approached this many times, but the real issue is what they call an omnibus or criminal bus, right? Uh, I think in the federal they call it a criminal bus, which I guess is a bus of criminals or something like that. But what it comes down to is instead of voting, okay, here's how much is going for defense, and here's how much is going for welfare, and here's how much is going for health care, it's, it's one huge bill where everything's included. Yeah, well, what they're doing, well, just to add to that, they're calling them continuing resolutions right. where, where instead of voting line item veto and, and they just vote for one big chunk of cash right. and it gets thrown like into the general fund. And what happens is it gets piecemealed out depending on which lobby has the highest control. Yeah, so I'm just saying that is, and, you know, like say Rand Paul, he said, well, I wouldn't vote for an omnibus bill even if it gave everything I wanted because, you know, Congress should have to vote on specific pieces of legislation yeah, see, that not, fund specific things. And it always the excuse is like, oh, okay, so you've got a year to make the budget. Well, I guess the Democrats didn't make a budget for six years, but you have a year to make it, and the Republicans... I know the Democrats, they never passed a budget. They never did They budget. never had a budget. They never did, but the Republicans did a budget every year. But that year. was Harry Reid yeah. and Nancy Pelosi. No, but I mean, the point I'm saying is you have a year to make the budget, but like two days before the budget runs out, All it's like, we got to do it. Oh, my God, now which we got to do it today, uh, continuing... Uh, oh, which is ridiculous, the the which is ridiculous, because they just goofed off for a year. So, really, there's no reason they can't do line item budgets, and so... And there's no reason that you can't say, yeah, we're going to fund Social Security, we're going to fund Medicare, we're going to fund the Defense Department, we're going to fund uh, the FBI, but we're not going to fund, for example, a treaty with Iran. And there's no reason you, th they have the power to do that. They just didn't do it because they're afraid that the Democrats would shut down the government and say, we're going to hold our breath between blue and you'll take the blame for it. 
Well, you know, and I think the Republicans are going, well, no, that's not how this Constitution is designed. It's designed, we have the power of the purse. We can withhold money, and that's our job. Yeah, but see, what's interesting is, is that you, if you remember under Harry Reid, he was going to get away with the 60-vote uh, filibuster, and he, he, the nuclear option, if you remember correctly, and, and it's funny enough, uh, under the Republican <coughs> control, they haven't said we're going to get we're going to use a nuclear option, which in fact would make it easy to pass bills because then you would need only a simple majority in the Senate and a, and, a, and a simple majority in the House. And that and now if the president decides to veto the bill, no, guess what? The nuclear option. No, we don't have to yeah, have but a see, 60 but that's vote. Not, that's not even the issue. Yeah, but no, but that's what they can use on the budget. I think that they wanted to keep the filibuster in because they felt it was a good tradition. Um, <laughs> no, I think that... Yes, we know that. But it's been along for a long time. But, I mean, the power of the purse, there's no reason they can't fund... I mean, they were voted the power of the purse, and they do not have to pay for okay, something that well, feels unconstitutional. They, okay, well, one of the things we're getting I think to that's tonight what, is that's who's, who's going to lead the House now that Mr. John Boehner is left? so, well, what happened is, is McCarthy quit because, I don't know, it was like allegations over a fair, could have been true or whatever, untrue, whatever. Um, he said something about Hillary's email. He yes, said, put he said that it was a witch hunt trying yeah, yeah, to get a, her, and of course, and so that gave so a lot that of ammunition. was a big no-no to that tell was, the That truth. was kind of like uh, who's the big guy who hugged Obama the week yeah. before the election? Yeah, Chris Christie. Christie. Yeah, Christie. It's, yeah it's, he hugged. He hugged right before like the presidential election. It's kind of like one of those election, election destroyers. Yeah, somehow that after that was after the hurricane. And so what happens is McCarthy needed ten or fifteen votes from the forty uh, vote. Freedom Caucus, and they didn't want to give it to him, right? And he didn't want to be embarrassed. Plus, he already stuck his. He was known as a rhino. Yeah, well, I think that most of the Republicans in the House are rhinos. rhinos. There's very few that aren't. Um, but the the point I'm saying here is that November 5th is the debt limit, and so what happens is every year they say, "Oh, we forgot about the debt limit to November 4th." So oh, my like, oh my gosh! We're going to run out tomorrow. Uh, we have yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, by so, the way, I forgot from last year. Yeah, yeah so, and then December 11th, there's a budget deadline, and they forgot about oh that. Oh, my God, the budget deadline. Oh, my God. And so, That's coming up next week. And, you know, you can say, no, we're not going to borrow any more money. I mean, if you are if you control the person, you can say, I'm not gonna, we're not going to borrow more money. You have to read well, your budget and just live within your means. I mean, I got a question. Do you realize there's a lot of proposals where you just take off Instead of doing cost of living increases for everything, you just say every budget we spend one penny less yeah. than we spent the year before. That would balance the budget. And but that, nobody I mean, even wants to think like about 10, that. 10, yes. There's well, no balance coming. Well, the thing is because what they're saying, anything that's not a 4 or 5% increase is considered a cut. No! Hey. And so basically, Oy vey. because it's not their money. I mean, they've got guns. They extort the money from the poor taxpayer. So, of course, they want to spend more and more because... That's what they do. And a government uh, department loses money if they don't spend it by the end of the year. Right. So they're trained not only, and also they, unless they overspend, then they don't get their increase. So it's, it's the opposite of private enterprise, you know. So, but, but what it is, is, is basically what you're doing is you're shifting money from the private sector to the government sector. And the government sector, I mean, they call basically, you know, mugging someone, going through their wallet, and buying a bunch of crack. They call that fantastic.